We're going to continue our series on red letters. And I want to talk to you today. I want to make sure that we dig into the topic and start this conversation in regards to biblical lockdowns. There are so many lockdowns in the Bible. And uh, if you are watching this from New South Wales, where four of our campuses are, then you're all in lockdown there. And so obviously because of uh, government public health orders, because of COVID-19 and how it's working there, but there are many lockdowns in the Bible and we can get a lot out of it of what God's people did and what they didn't do. So we're going to dig into that. Um, in the Old Testament, you've got David in the cave of Adullam. That's quite a wild little journey right there. You've got Daniel in the lion's den. You've got Jonah in a whale. You've got uh, Moses, who's a shepherd, and it's because he's in lockdown. He's in isolation from people. He ends up with the burning bush. But also, to go up on Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, another isolation lockdown kind of moment. You've got Noah stuck in the boat with his family and a whole bunch of animals for long periods of time. These are some wild lockdowns, but they continue into the New Testament. You've got Paul and Silas in jail. You've actually got a lot of the different uh, uh, apostles and disciples that end up in jail over the time. John, uh, who wrote the book of Revelation from the Isle of Patmos in jail in isolation in real lockdown there uh, you've got paul in prison who writes to the church in philippi which is where we get the book of philippians who pens these amazing words rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice there's a guy that didn't let lockdown get him down now, the upper room in acts chapter 2 jesus says as he heads away at the start of acts he says look wait for the holy spirit and so they went to an upper room and they prayed and they fasted until the Holy Spirit uh, poured out on the day of Pentecost. You can see that in Acts chapter 2. Um, but then you've got Jesus in the wilderness, uh, praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible is filled with lockdowns, and we, through reading the Bible, can get the precedent and get the wisdom of how to nail this season of life really well. Now, some of these lockdowns were forced. Some were by design, some in obedience to God. And there are some lockdowns that happen because of disease. Some really clear examples of that come in the book of Leviticus. Um, and so it, in Leviticus chapter 13, it talks about a range of different defiling skin diseases and some pretty wild things that God put in that look wild to us now, but at the time were revolutionary. It was all about taking care of God's people and making sure that they were safe, that they were well and taken care of. Chapter 13 of Leviticus in the Old Testament, verses 9 through 11, when anyone has a defiling skin disease, everyone say, ew, you can put that in the chat, ew, um, they must be brought to the priest. I am so glad that if you've got some form of rash on your skin, that you can take that to the pharmacist or the doctor. God bless you. Um, the priest is to examine them. And if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw, <laughs> there you go, raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease and the priest shall pronounce them unclean. He is not to isolate them because they are already unclean I, I, I'm, I, this is wild through Leviticus we talk in chapter 13 there's boils there's burns there's baldness this is wild because it actually discusses in the topic of skin diseases does discuss baldness I know this is going to be a touchy topic for some gentlemen out there but it says in verse 40 a man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean just to make sure just for those that are either struggling with that concept um, but it also does say in verse 43 but yet the priest is to examine the baldness all you need to know is that at campus pastors meetings from now on we're changing some things uh, and and it will be me uh, just inspecting some baldness right there um, if they're unclean they're meant to isolate Verse 45 of Leviticus 13 says what this isolation <laughs> looks like. Anyone with such a defiling disease, note baldness is not that disease. Although you could have any on top. The baldness itself is not a problem. Um, there's some really uncomfortable people in this auditorium right now. They must wear torn clothes, which I think is wild because I've got some jeans. I've got some t-shirts where tears in them. They're expensive tears. I bet it's always amazing. The people that give the dad jokes about, oh, someone give that guy a pay rise because his jeans. And I'm like, no, no, no. They're the expensive ones with the tears, ladies and gentlemen. They're the fashionable tears. And this is what you're meant to do if you're in isolation. Wear torn clothes. Get it right. Straight from the Bible here. 
Now, not just that, but let their hair be unkempt. Cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. Uh, we could be in Monty Python term, times right here, ladies and gentlemen. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean and they must live alone and they must live outside the camp. So we've got some we've got some isolations and some lockdowns that are forced, that are designed, that are some in obedience to God, some because of disease. But there's a couple, there's a bunch in the Old Testament that are there because we're there, we're trying to focus on God. We're taking time out from a busy schedule to focus on God. The first one of those is a whole bunch of feasts throughout the Old Testament. And if, if you dig into and study through the feasts of the Old Testament, each one of them is rich with meaning and a focus of why and what and what are we remembering in regards to this feast, in regards to our relationship with God and how much of an awesome father he is. There's the feast of Passover. There's the feast of unleavened bread. Uh, there's the first fruits. There's Pentecost. There's the feast of trumpets. There's the day of atonement. There's another one called the feast of tabernacles, where you would actually every year in the lead up, um, the family would put together like a tent, like a booth, like a, and everyone would stay. You would be out of your house and you would you would live in a separate kind of structure, dwelling, usually made by palm leaves for a whole week to remember how good God was to the Israelites, getting them out of Egypt. This is wild. It's taking time out of busy schedule, making sure we're ready and remembering God. The Sabbath year is every seven years. The Jubilee is every 50 years. And it's to celebrate and to grow and to pass on values, to build relationship with God and relationship with others. That's why at Good Life Church, we have no problem putting on occasionally festivals, times where we get together like marriage matters. Can I, can I congratulate every couple that went, I'm going to put the time aside to be a part of marriage matters. Or we put on Good Life Summit. And there were some parents that were, because we were going to provide child minding and then lockdown happened, they got the YouTube link so they could actually build that into their life, even though they were juggling kids on the day. Can I congratulate that you took time aside? You went, here's my busy schedule, chill out for one second, and we're going to do this. There's a biblical lockdown to focus on God. The other one of the Old Testament set right through from the, uh, from the Ten Commandments is the concept of Sabbath. And it's every single week taking a 24-hour period to focus on. It's a personal decision to have a lockdown. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 9. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. The Sabbath is a day and it's a discipline to turn off life and the speed of life to rest and to worship and to delight. Jesus got this. He got this concept. He was the true proponent and example of living the good life, which included understanding times of lockdown. Matthew 11 verse 28 in the message translation puts it this way. This is Jesus' words. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me and get away with me. It's a lockdown. It's a personal choice to do that, to get away with God. You'll recover your life if you do this. I'll show you how to take a real rest, to walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Now, Jesus lived this. So his baptism in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, it's a wild ride because the Holy Spirit descends on him in the bodily form of a dove. The Father's voice comes at the same time. Everyone watching would have been absolutely blown away. But he goes straight from that. You would think ready to go into his ministry. He's ready to go, but he doesn't go from baptism to go preaching. He goes from baptism to 40 days in the wilderness. You can read this in Mark chapter 4 from verse 1 through to 11. He goes to the wilderness 40 days of prayer and fasting where he encounters the devil and actually has a beat down on Satan. In the Mark chapter 1 account of Jesus' first days of ministry, he goes from baptism to 40 days in the wilderness. In the Mark chapter 1 account, he goes from the wilderness, and this is a wild ride because he then calls disciples. He then drives out a demon. Better out than in, I say. Um, he heals a bunch of people at Simon's mother-in-law's place. And then in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says this. He Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went to a solitary place and prayed. He knew the power 
of every day having a lockdown moment, having a lockdown significant times, Jesus did not let society dictate his rhythm or his schedule. This word where he went to, he would go to where in the, in the 40 days in the wilderness is a Greek word, eremos, which doesn't just mean a desert or a wilderness in the way that we would see. It's almost like potentially cultivatable land, which is currently fallow. No one's actually working that land. There's, 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 there's opportunity, there's a future in this land, but yet no one is taking it. It's currently still in the wilderness time. That wilderness that's mentioned in the 40 days of prayer and fasting is the same word that Mark used when it goes to a solitary place. That solitary place, that word Eremus is not just a wilderness, but a place that we actually choose to take our lives aside and to isolate. Jesus didn't let society dictate his rhythm or schedule and the result was an effective life. It was unstressed and he handled forced lockdowns really well. He handled times of pace when it was time to, the harvest was ripe and he was on the job and he handled those times when it was slow down because Jesus understood the rhythm of being focused on God, whether he was active in the work or active with his heavenly father, just face to face, just one on one. Matthew chapter four, verses one through to four talks about this time when he goes to the wilderness. And we're going to quickly get some keys out of this to make sure that we handle this season of lockdown brilliantly. If you're ready, let's go. Matthew chapter four, verses one through 11. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Captain obvious in the Bible here. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It goes through to verse 11, and there's three times the Satan comes to tempt Jesus, and three times he uses the word of God to be the answer that means that the devil gets angry absolutely defeated and has to leave the bible's promise for you is resist the devil submit to god resist the devil and he will flee that promise is for you as well and i understand that in lockdown jesus in this lockdown right here everyone's lockdown experience is different there are people with your business or your work then 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 responsibilities are ramping up there are people that have lost work there are people that are juggling homeschooling their children right now. And can I say, no matter your experience, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing in this lockdown, we can still get the principles from the Word of God to help and guide us through. I get that experiences are different. Your lived experience is different, but never let your lived experience trump the principles of the Word of God in the way that we face those things. And so we get to this in chapter 4 to see how Jesus actually walked this through and gives us the answers in regards to doing very, very well in lockdown. Verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Here's point one. Find God's presence. Jesus was led by the Spirit. There's a purpose behind it, but we're not getting to purpose first. The first thing we've got to understand is in the quiet, in the wilderness, in the Eremus, in the solitary place that we've found ourselves or the solitary place that we make sure we get ourselves to, it's finding God's presence, not His purpose yet. Jesus was led by the Spirit. And sometimes I think uh, we struggle with this whole concept of just pulling ourselves aside, not for purpose, but just for the presence of God, because we've accepted the nonstop, the no rest, the always doing, the always focused, the always got something that's actually taking my attention. Do we fill each moment with pace and action and a phone? Or are we able to like Psalm 46 and verse 10 says in the message translation, step out of traffic. Take a long, loving look at me. Your high God, above politics, above everything. He is in the quiet. He is in the moments where you choose to step out of the traffic. Jesus, knowing that he'd caused a commotion by healing everyone, the next day gets up really early before dawn before the sun up so much so that his disciples had to come looking for him where everyone's looking for everyone's looking for you because he understood 
to find God, to find his heavenly father, was found by getting out of the traffic, taking the time. You may be really busy right now. Can I encourage you? Find the space. Find him in getting out of the traffic. Find relationship in him. You might be more comfortable finding the purpose of God, of trying to get to the action list. I find if I've got a lot of things on my plate, when I'm spending my time with God, those things churn through. And I've got two ways of doing it, depending on my time with God. But I will go for a walk and leave my phone behind. And I'll leave my phone behind because I don't want to have to stop. I don't even want to take notes. I want to just go. I want to, I want to bring my mind back to God. I want to bring my heart back to God, not to the to-do list. And if that means I miss some things on the to-do list, then I'm going to trust God that in that relationship, He's going to be able to carry me and help me through that. And so the first point in the quiet, in the Eremus, if we're going to handle the lockdown, if we're going to handle the wilderness moments, number one, find God's presence. But number two, we want to find God's purpose. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Look, that's a pretty wild ride, but that was the deal that was happening. He came to seek and save the lost. He came to defeat the devil. And so he's going to face him. But we found out what Jesus' purpose here is right now. He's come to be tempted by the devil. He's got a macro plan. He's got a macro plan for his life. But what about for your life? He has a macro plan for you. Will you trust him in the presence of God, taking time, no matter what the busyness looks like, no matter what the structure looks like, whether you've got more responsibilities and more stress or less right now, will we take the time to say, God, I'm going to be led by your spirit. Now I'm going to find your purpose in here. He always has a macro plan. He's building something great out of you. And if it looks difficult right now, can I assure you, Romans 8 chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that in all things God works together for good. He works together for good. He's got a good plan. He knows the plans for you. They're to prosper you. They give you a future and a hope. Romans 8, we know that in all things God works for good for those who love him who are called according to His purpose. Sure, I'm going to find His presence, but in His presence now I'm going to find His purpose. And if it looks like I'm struggling, if it's not happening how I thought it would, or it's the prayers aren't happening at the time that I would hope, I'm going to trust Him. My issue could be with the timing. My issue could be with timing. God, how come you haven't come through at my time? How come my disappointments are still there? If you, want to, if you want to go through that thought of handling disappointments that God actually might not want to just meet your expectations but exceed them, go back to last week's message from Pastor Jace uh, in, in red letters. Remarkable in regards to doing this journey and allowing God, trusting God that He's going to exceed your expectations. You can do more, immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine or dream or think according to the power of God that works within us. If it's His timing, well, can I trust Him too? If I've got his presence and I know his purpose, then I'm going to face the difficulty knowing that in this difficulty, God's working where I can't see and he's building something inside of me that I need for this journey now and for the future that he's bringing me to. Here's the third thing we're going to learn from Jesus' lockdown. In the quiet, in the wilderness, in the Eremus. It's not just finding God's presence. It's not just finding God's purpose. It's now making a godly plan. Jesus had a plan. When the devil came, he quoted the scriptures. He had a plan. He knew what he was up to. Here's, here's my encouragement. While you're facing a difficult time, lean into the scriptures to be the word of God that's the basis for everything. When you're struggling, when you're facing a difficult time, Biblical wisdom and biblical advice is a rock. It's a bedrock. It's a cornerstone that can't be shaken. People's opinions could, could differ. People's opinions could come and go. Common notions of what's right and what's wrong will come and go. People will say all kinds of different things, but the Word of God is true. It is a rock. It is a solid foundation. I want to encourage you to make a godly plan that's based upon the Word of God. And so when I start to do that, I start to then bring about then a routine for my life. 
Because if I'm going to go, what's the Word of God say? Well, it's going to encourage me to be and then to do. And there's going to be some actions that are going to help. So I'm going to encourage you to be that person that finds God's presence, finds God's purpose, and then put it into a plan. If it's got to be a money plan, some people call it a budget. But I tell you what, people that don't have a budget or a money plan usually don't have more money at the end of their month. They have too much month at the end of the money. Can I encourage you to make yourself a plan? And if you're in lockdown right now, which everyone in New South Wales is right now, can I encourage you then to find the Word of God, sit down with your time and build yourself a routine that's helpful for you. Now, some people's routines are going to be way more regimented and they're going to be way more purpose built. They're going to be way more detailed. But if you're not that kind of person, then that's okay. I'm not that person either. But I've worked out that if I don't have some form of plan and some form of routine, my days just blend into the next minute and the next episode and the next thing. And something will take my attention unless I go, I want to build my life upon the plan of the solid Word of God. And so I'm going to have things like I'm still going to set an alarm, even though my, some days I don't need it. I want to set an alarm and when I wake up, here's something I want to do. I want to make my bed. Simple routines like that actually really, really help the journey. To say, you know what, I'm getting up and I'm going to be purposeful about my day. I've found His presence. I know His, I, I know his purpose and now I'm going to make a godly plan. Can I encourage you? And this is not, I haven't found this directly in the Bible, but can I encourage you if you want to get onto your day no matter what lockdown looks like, can I encourage you to set the alarm, make the bed and get dressed. Getting dressed is often a good thing to get yourself ready for the rest of the day. It sets yourself in, a, in, a, in, a, in an avenue that's actually about, let's get about God's purpose for my life. Can I encourage you to find the time to spend time with God? Spend time in His presence. And can I encourage you, if you've got a lot of time on your hands, don't go anywhere near a screen until you've had some transformative connection point with the Word of God and with prayer. Make a godly plan. Find the time you're going to do in your day to do some exercise. Think about your eating plan. I've found out that COVID kilos is a real thing. If I stop planning my meals because the way that used to work I'd go out to work and I'd have to plan my meals but if I'm at home I'm not planning my meals and I tell you what the snacks are just there and the temptation to continue to eat is just there what I'm doing is I've got to make a godly plan in regards to a range of these different things if I can do that I'm going to limit my screen time and I want to take moments of my day. Can I encourage you, no matter how busy you are, take moments of your day to pray. You know, it's so easy when I've got a spare second to flip out the phone and check whatever. It could be social media. It could be a game. It could be an email. It could be responding to text messages. And I've found having a Sabbath where I go, you know what? I'm not responding to anything. I'm putting it away. I'm going to leave it on the bench. It's actually really good for my soul. It's amazing to be able to turn off all those voices and just allow a biblical lockdown where I find God's presence and I find God's purposes and I then follow that godly plan. And so instead, when I'm between things, I'm waiting for something. I don't pull out the phone to distract me. It's amazing how God's right there at every moment and I can actually see Him and I can sense Him. And I can take the time instead of pulling out the phone for whatever the thing is on that thing. To go, God, your presence is here. I can pray for friends. I can pray for my family. I'm praying for a miracle for my dad right now in a range of different ways. I, I, get, a, I get a bunch of friends that are going through very difficult times and I could take time to pray for them. I need a miracle in my body right now. I can take the time for that. Could you imagine missing those moments because I'm distracted by this thing because I don't understand what God can do in the middle of a lockdown? I want to find His presence. I want to find His purpose. And I want to make a godly plan. I want to take time to breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out distraction. Breathe out anxiety. Breathe out fear. Breathe in His presence. Take time. Am I literally breathing Him in? No, I'm just focusing on just taking some time to commit to Him. 
But as I do that, I can breathe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I can start to say, God, I want all that you've got. I want to, by faith, breathe you in. I found his presence. I found his purpose. Now I'm taking the time to make a plan. And in those moments between, I go back to his presence. And it's amazing. It's amazing the strength that I find in the middle of a lockdown. The end result for Jesus was he was able to say those words that I quoted earlier. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. So your time of lockdown might be filled with stress and responsibility. It might be devoid of all of that. But today, I want to encourage you to find the unforced rhythm of grace. He's not saying do nothing. He says, walk with me, yeah, and work with me. So do the work that you're doing to find the purpose and do it. Make the godly plan and do it. But do it with him. Watch how I do it, Jesus says. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I'm believing that we in lockdown would become stronger as disciples of Jesus Christ. That where the world might be struggling, that we would find more grace, more resource. I'm believing for you that you would have more wisdom to navigate whatever it is that's happening right now in your lockdown time, that we would find our own Eremus, our own personal solitary place with God where I can breathe in his presence and I find his purpose and then I make a godly plan. I'm believing that in that is the unforced rhythms of grace. Come on, I want to pray for you right now. Just lift your palms before God in an act of surrender. Lift your hands. I want to believe God that He today, there's so much in lockdown. There's so much that God wants to do in biblical lockdowns. And today He wants to do a great thing in you and then through you. He truly is the Savior. He truly is the healer. He truly is your strength. He is turning all things for good for those who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. God, I pray today, Lord God, over every person as a part of this service, Lord God, that You are doing a great, a miraculous, a strong, a powerful, a grace-filled, a wisdom-filling work in every single one of us Lord God we breathe in your presence Lord God and we lean in on your purpose Lord God in the middle of lockdown we do what you did Jesus and we be led by your presence and we lean into purpose and then make a godly biblical wise plan Lord God if we don't know enough of the word at this stage of our walk Lord God we lean into uh, biblical mentors lean into reading your word every day learning from it growing from it Lord God to make a biblical plan that we would truly walk in the unforced rhythms of your grace. God, I thank you for a new smile, new confidence, new strength, and new wisdom. God, for every person as a part of this service, God, today, that we're not just going to survive. God, I pray that we would truly thrive and grow and be stronger. God, we'd have resource for us and for ours, Lord God, but for those around us watching on, it truly, they would see the good life being lived out and then want to know more of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you've never said yes to Jesus, or maybe you have, but you've let it slip, I would, I would hate to skip by and not give you the opportunity to make a decision for Jesus. I'm so glad that I was in a service and someone gave me the opportunity to do this. But the same Jesus that showed us how to live with these scriptures, that showed us how to live through lockdown, is the same Jesus that died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. It's the same Jesus who makes a way for our sins to be forgiven. It's a remarkable gift and no one deserves it, but yet it's available for every single one of us. So I want to give you the opportunity to pray a prayer of asking Jesus into your heart, forgive your sins, give you a brand new start. So if you want to do that, then I'm going to ask you and give you the opportunity to pray just after me a prayer like this. It's just a start. There's a great journey of walking with him, but it starts with an open heart to God and asking him to forgive sins and to, he gives you a brand new, it's remarkable, it's so, so good. So just pray this prayer like this after me. Say it like this, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your love for me. Despite my sin and mess, you include me in your family and for that, I'm so grateful. So today, I ask you into my heart. I thank you that you forgive my sins. I'm leaving them behind. And I want you in my life and my decisions and my priorities from this day forward. I want to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, 
or if you're coming back to him, we would love to help in that journey. What I'm going to ask you to do is go to our website, goodlifechurch.com.au. Go to the next steps button. You've got to put down your details because that's how we get to get in contact with you and, and, and come alongside you in this journey of faith. It's more than just one prayer. It's more than just a one night stand. This is a life with the, the God of heaven who loves you and made a way for you. And today's the first step. We'd love to celebrate with you as well. So please go to the website, make that contact, and we'd love to to help you from that point. What's well, enough for me? I'm going to hand it back to Jason Laura. Thank you so much for having us. We're looking forward to catching you again real soon. Cheers.